For most pharmacists, the NAPLEX is the highest stakes exam they will ever take in their pharmacy career. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you 10 tips to make sure that you pass it the first time. Tip number one starts before you even begin studying, and that is to read the NAPLEX competency statements. This doesn't take very long, but it's actually really important. These competency statements, which I will have linked down in the description below, are telling you exactly what is going to be on the exam. Now, in some cases, this may seem very vague because they're like mechanisms of action and brand and generic, but those can give you a guiding principle of what types of things will show up on the exam and what probably won't. Which brings me to tip number two, which is to start preparing sooner rather than later. If you've watched my other NAPLEX videos, you know that I took only three weeks to study for the NAPLEX, and let me tell you, I would not do that again. I passed. It's true. But the cramming and the anxiety that came with waiting until the last possible moment to start studying while I was in residency was not my best move. Do yourself a favor and use the final year of rotations as an opportunity to study. Are you on a psychiatric rotation? Then it's time to study those psych drugs. It's really this simple. Can you cram? Yes. Should you cram? No. Tip number three is a huge one, which is to do as many study questions as possible. I think study questions are so great and one of my favorite learning tools whenever I was studying for the NAPLEX because you remember the things that you've gotten wrong and you then try to remember why. And the perfect person to help you with is today's sponsor, TrueLearn. TrueLearn is a study platform with a ton of question banks. Actually, there's over 1,500 questions in their question bank available to you to help you study for the NAPLEX. I really wish I would have had something like this when I was studying for the NAPLEX because I loved questions banks and there are so many questions in this. Plus, you get to see the answers to the questions that you got right and wrong. So if you made your best guess and got it right, you can still review all of those answers and figure out why exactly that that is the most correct answer. I also love that the resources used to get that right answer are available to you and some of them are even clickable links. If reading text is just not your style, then you can actually combine your TrueLearn subscription with a Picmonic subscription. If you're not familiar with Picmonic, they have over 1300 video lessons where you can learn things from like antibiotics to anti-coags to diabetes medications. It's a great combination of using graphics and stories to help you remember the material. After you learned everything that you want to over in Picmonic, then you you can go back over to TrueLearn and quiz yourself on that material. I'm excited to tell you that TrueLearn is offering 20% off any of their subscriptions, including the one combined with Picmonic, to anybody who purchases a subscription of 90 days or more. Just use my code HAPPYFARM at checkout and you will get that awesome discount. Thank you to TrueLearn for sponsoring this video and helping with tip number four, which is to practice calculations. When I say practice calculations, I don't mean focus on it or do it here and there. I mean like every single day, especially when you start studying hard those last three, four weeks before the exam, literally every single day you should be doing some calculations. Even if you're really good at math, I highly recommend you spend a lot of time on calculations for a couple of reasons. Number one, this is a timed exam and doing calculations takes a lot of time and it's very easy to make a mistake, especially if you are not used to doing those types of calculations day to day, which most of us probably aren't. And the other reason I recommend practicing these calculations is because they can induce a lot more anxiety than a knowledge-based question, especially if you know part of the calculation, but maybe not all of it, and you're muddling your way through, it can really get in your head. So practice those calculations, and tip number five is to make sure you're practicing using the right calculator. For those candidates who are recently out of school, you probably are used to using some sort of online calculator to do online exams, because that is becoming more and more popular, especially since the pandemic. But you wanna practice with using that online scientific calculator, even if you have a handheld one at home. This helps you get really used to those functions and know how it works. The other tip I have is that you can actually request one of these basic calculators. And so for questions that maybe don't need a scientific calculator, if this is faster for you, which it definitely was for me whenever I was practicing, I could tell it would be a lot quicker for me to use this. I went ahead and requested one on my exam date because I knew I could use this quicker. Tip number six is one you have probably heard before, but it's extremely important and that is to know your top 200 drugs. Know the brand name and generic, know the mechanism of action, know the most serious serious or the most common side effects associated with these medications. Are there any specific counseling points that patients would need to know? You know those ones that in class your professors harped on over and over and over again? Yeah, know those. Remember this is a minimum competency exam, so knowing that top 200 drugs is definitely on that minimum competency list. Tip number seven is to create a good game plan for test day. Well, what does that mean? It means reading the new candidate bulletin and understanding every aspect of the exam 
exam. It means you have all of the different ID requirements all lined out and ready to go. You're scheduling at a time of day that is good for you. If you are terrible at mornings and you're always late to things, maybe that 8 a.m. time slot is not for you. I know sometimes you will have to travel for the exam, so setting yourself up for success, whether that means getting a hotel room the night before or setting your alarm extra early so you have extra cushion time if you are going to have to travel is extremely important. You want to make sure you eat well beforehand. This is an extremely long exam. You're going to be at the testing center for probably around five to six hours. So make sure you eat something even if you have a nervous stomach. And if you have the opportunity to, I highly recommend going to the test center the day before or a few days before so you can actually see where you're going so there's not that uncertainty the day of or the morning of your test day. Speaking of test day, tip number eight is to take the breaks allotted on test day. I know it may be tempting to just like rush through the whole exam, just get it done and get it over with, but there are two 10 minute breaks built into the exam. And if you do take any breaks outside of that, which is allowed, it is going to count down on your timer. And so if you need to go to the bathroom or need to do anything outside of the room, even if it's just to take a moment to breathe and relax for a second, it's best to do it during those scheduled breaks. And while 10 minutes does not seem like a lot, it was really nice to just step away for a moment, breathe, forget about everything that I've done in the past, and then go back into that room. Speaking of going back into that test room, tip number nine is to not dwell on the questions that you don't no. I know it can be really easy to dwell on all the questions that you couldn't remember the answer to or didn't know, but there are so many more questions that you probably did know. And remember, 25 of the questions that you're tested over aren't even scored, so that question that you thought was worded weird or maybe didn't understand where it was coming from could very well be a question that they're just testing out to see if they want to use it on the exam in the future, and it might not even be scored. So just move on and focus on the things that you did know. And last but not least is number 10. This is a little bit more of a piece of a advice than anything else, but you will never feel 100% prepared for an exam like this. There's always something new to learn and that's okay. You're going to get some questions wrong. You're going to get some questions right. And ultimately you went to pharmacy school and have studied so hard for this exam. Trust that knowledge you've gained. Trust yourself that you have learned what you need to, to be a minimally competent pharmacist. So go in there and show that exam what you know. Good luck on your NAPLEX. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.